Software-wise, the NVIDIA Shield tablet comes with Android 4.4.2 out of the box, but waiting for us when we unpacked it was Android Lollipop, ready to be installed. We've done this review based on Android Lollipop, and it's very good to see that NVIDIA have produced a good software suite and got their Lollipop update out very rapidly, including necessary updates to their own internal software. Let's go hands-on now and take a look at the NVIDIA Shield tablet software, including the features of Android Lollipop, as well as those that are specific to the NVIDIA Shield tablet. So, the NVIDIA Shield tablet is running Android 5 Lollipop. It came with Android 4.4.2 out of the box, but the update was also waiting for us to run, so we may as well review this using the latest software that you will all be using this Christmas. So the first thing really to mention is this is Android Lollipop, the new improved and updated version of Android. It does provide some new functionality and a new look and feel that's called Material Designs. You'll find this running not only through the operating system itself, but also through Google's apps and potentially third party apps as well. Now, one of the things that Nvidia have done is updated some areas of the uh, Android Lollipop operating system to include features of the NVIDIA Shield. So for instance, under the notification shade, you'll also have the option for the Shield controller and the share functionality as well. You can also cast the screen if you have a Chromecast, so you can send this display directly to your television set. It is a little bit more laggy doing it like that. Certainly it's much better to use the HDMI uh, output and use the cable to plug into the TV. But the Shield controller option here will bring up the Shield controller, but it will also show you the current battery level for the controller as well. The share options will bring up the share menu, which can also be accessed directly from the NVIDIA Shield controller. From here, you can stream to Twitch, record the last five minutes, or just set a manual record to keep recording. You can also turn your microphone on, your webcam on, and the chat option. And there's also some settings here as well, which are useful for tweaking how you're going to be streaming to Twitch. Within the notification shade is also the option for the auto-rotate and full screen. Full screen keeps the on-screen controls in place. When you go onto full screen mode, it will remove them, and instead you can swipe up to get them back. For my mind, it is better to have that kind of full immersion going on, especially when you have to be playing games. You also have the option to create additional users as well, either guests or fully fledged accounts. All of this is handled within the Android operating system itself. Now, if we come into the actual settings area, this is an area that has taken quite a new look and feel from previous versions of Android. Gone is the kind of black and gray. Now it's white and, well, a kind of turquoisey color for the icons. Now, things are pretty much the muchness in here, other than the items that Nvidia have added themselves. But let's first have a look at the top row, which is our networking options. So we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, and under more, we have access to airplane mode, setting our default SMS app. If you happen to be using an LTE version of the tablet, you've also got the options for tethering hotspot, VPN, mobile networks, and mobile plan. Now what's missing from here, interestingly, is NFC support. The tablet doesn't have NFC support, and so we have no option for it. When we come into the device area, this is where Nvidia have added a few of their own bits and pieces. We've got some controller options in here. So for connecting the controller, enabling auto download, and enabling the gamepad mapper. You can also set how a virtual mouse is going to be treated as well. Display is fairly standard stuff. This is where you'll find your brightness levels, your color correction, and what will happen when the screen rotates, as well as how long the screen will stay on for. Direct Stylus is for our stylus option, which we'll go through from a software point of view in a moment. But in here, you can set how that stylus is going to interact with the device, how long a finger will stay on the screen before registering a tap, for instance, and whether it's a lefty or not. You can also set handwriting recognition on as well when it's removed, and also set an action when you pull out the stylus for what it should actually do. In this case, opens the Direct Stylus Launcher, which is the default.
We also have options for HDMI as well. So if you plug in the HDMI cable and then connect it to a TV, what will the tablet do? Well, in this case, it will prompt to switch to the HDMI mode when it's connected. And this is basically mirror mode or TV mode. And you can also set it for 4K as well. And there's some color correction options there also. Sound and notifications, storage, battery and apps and users are very similar to what we've had before. So we'll just quickly go through those. This is where you're going to be able to, whoops, set your media volume as well as ringtone and notifications and set what those sounds are going to be as well. In storage, you can see what is using space currently. So from apps through to pictures, downloads and cache data. If you come onto these options, you can usually get more information. Whoops, it's still calculating, there we go. And from here, if you want to, you can uninstall apps as well. Battery usage is actually pretty good with this tablet we found. On average, you get around eight hours of standard usage. So a bit of Wi-Fi, a bit of browsing, a bit of gaming, a little bit of everything really, a bit of media playback. For heavy gaming, you're looking at a battery that will last you around two to three hours. Now that's on par when you think about it for most portable gaming systems. You're running the system at maximum power levels and you are going to find that the battery will drain quite quickly as with any games. Now, obviously the higher the brightness of the screen, the faster that battery is going to drain as well. Just two things to be aware of. We go into apps, we can see the individual apps running list. You'll have seen this access just now from the storage area. From there, we can uninstall apps and so on. Within users, we have the ability to set up new users, guests and so on. When we come down to personal, things have stayed pretty similar here. We've got our location controls, which show us what device, uh, sorry, what apps are trying to access uh, location information and we can set how the battery saving should operate there as to whether it should use GPS, assisted Wi-Fi uh, location or simply nothing at all. Security, as you might expect, this is where we can set up security for our device, everything from pin unlocks to passcodes and so on. Be aware, encrypting your tablet is now an option, as it always has been in fact, but under Lollipop it has supposedly been improved. However, when we've looked at encryption on this device, we found that it really slows down the internal storage. It is not worth using, in my opinion, in its current state. Accounts is where you can set up the accounts for all of your various apps and tie them to a user. Language and input is where we have, well, funnily enough, language and input. So everything to do with the language the device is going to be using, your spell checker and the keyboards as well. You can also set your voice input and in there also and game controller is another option in there. Backup and reset is where you can set how you will back up your device to Google's cloud for later restoring if you need to do a reset. The option also is in there to completely wipe the device and start again. Take it back to factory settings basically. Although that will, if you've upgraded to Lollipop, only take you back to Lollipop when it was first installed. It won't take you back to previous versions of Android. Everything here is very, very obvious. So these are just setting up, as you might expect, the date and time, your accessibility settings, printing, and if you're a developer, being able to turn on and tweak some of the background stuff that uh, Android Lollipop can do. Now, when we actually come into the software itself within the NVIDIA Shield, what we find is that NVIDIA have kind of left the majority of the operating system alone, other than adding functionality for their controller and the stylus. When it comes to bunging apps into the operating system, they've kind of kept it just to what was necessary. So we have the Nvidia Shield Hub, and this is where all of our games are available, both on PCs, on the grid, Nvidia's game streaming service, and within the actual Android operating system itself. So your Android games. Everything being brought together in one single place is fantastic. And again, when you're using the controller, it makes it feel like a very nicely integrated package. Kind of like having your very own Xbox Live or PlayStation Network store kind of integrated fully because you also have the shop option as well there. When we come into the Dabbler, which is Nvidia's Dibba, this allows us to draw on the screen, as you'll have already seen in some footage. It works very, very well. The clever thing with this is it uses the GPU uh, performance power to do some clever effects here. 
where it's actually mathematically interpreting how much absorbency there should be from the paper relative to the ink and the amount of pressure that's being applied. And as you can see, it generates a bleed effect just like you would have from, well, real paper, real paint. It's really, really clever. And as far as I'm aware, it's something fairly unique to the NVIDIA Shield tablet. As I say, the NVIDIA Shield tablet hasn't been bloated out with large amounts of unnecessary software. Everything that's here feels necessary and actually feels very well done. The integrations directly into the operating system have been well handled. They aren't fudged in any way, shape or form. It all just works. And I think that's quite a remarkable thing to be able to say for any device these days, especially for a tablet coming from a manufacturer who is not known for tablets. This is their first one. It shows they've put the work in and the effort to creating a software suite that is complementary to Android without getting in the way. It adds functionality and makes sure that all of Nvidia's features work as advertised, but without dragging the system performance down. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can pledge $1 a month on Patreon to help support the Androidizen, keeping us 100% independent. An honest opinion direct from the UK. If you pledge $1 a month, you'll be entered into our prize pool to win cool items from our review bag. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. We love to chat.